Hello, my Wealth Wealth Tribe and friends. This is Ms. Sophia here at Wealthy Wife. How are you doing? I hope all goes well with you, and I want to say thank you for joining me. I do appreciate you being here. <laughs> I have been, once again, enjoying myself immensely. I have, like I said, been doing my studies. I'm about to release. I've got actually two books. I've got actually three books. Three books coming out. Three guides coming out for you guys. Hmm, kind of debating as to which one I'm going to release first because one is actually a guide in reference to, once again, the Paramour, which is perfect because I'll be discussing this today. And then the other one is a secret. It's actually a set, a two-part set. But let's talk about the Paramour Bible first. How's that sound? I've been reading through the comments and someone mentioned in reference to questions about a large age gap in reference to relationships, um, a gentleman that's much older than her. As I've mentioned before, ladies, as well as gentlemen, I have a ton of experience in many, many, many things. That's the beauty of actually living a life and, you know, becoming more seasoned in the process. Uh, for the individual who sent, that, uh, who sent that comment to me, as I responded back to you, the gentleman I was involved with for 10 years, he was actually 29 years older than me. And it was so crazy because, I'll be honest, I didn't know. I have discussed this in prior audios and videos. I had no clue. I knew he was older than me. I probably figured like maybe 15-ish years maybe because he looked really, really, really good. This man was in amazing shape. And he looked, I guess he looked older, but not, not that much older than me. So we wound up being together for 10 years. And it was a great relationship for the most part. It definitely had its challenging moments. I ended it for incredibly valid reasons. But what would you like to know? Because maybe what I wind up doing is actually doing an audio on that particular topic. Because as I have been listening, as I've mentioned before, I've been listening to Kevin Samuels. And for the young, I'm assuming young lady who made a comment in reference to, I guess she doesn't like Kevin Samuels because she was pretty uh, adamant about her comment, how she felt about him. Kevin Samuels had quite a bit of value to add to women when you learn how to listen to him and get out of your feelings. And if you listen to entire videos, not just clips and sound bites that people choose to uh, put out there for you to listen to in reference to Kevin. Did he have strong opinions? Yes, he did. Uh, but the one thing I've learned, because I've listened to many of his videos, and the reason I've been listening to them once again is because of the, literally the conversations after his topics. His topics are good. I guess he has a handful and I'm kind of going, eh. but most of the ones I've listened to have been very good topics because they really do give you insight in reference to, once again, the men. Because remember, he had a very distinct client base. Kevin had a niche and they had opinions that they shared with him. He was sharing information to guys that he, he was receiving from the men that he worked with for the court for many, 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 many years. And ladies, here's a kicker. You don't have to like someone's opinion doesn't matter. But if it's someone's truth, meaning this is what his people are telling them, telling him, then you are either going to learn how to work with it or you're just not going to choose those types of men. It's not a difficult thing. We are not everyone for everybody and everyone is not for us. Just saying. So that's why I'm always discussing the importance of knowing who you are and really having a strong uh, level of self-confidence. Because the one thing I'm really noticing as I listen to, like I said, the conversations after his topics, wow. I mean, I've known because I work in the weight loss industry, the level of, of just issues that women have with self-confidence, self-esteem and self-worth. It's bad. I'm, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It's bad. It really, really, really is. Because women so often are still expecting someone outside of them to say that they're okay. To tell you that you're beautiful, to tell you that you're fine, to tell you that you're acceptable, to tell you that we love you, to tell whatever. There's so many women, and I'm not saying men don't require this too because some men do obviously, but my client base, my niche are women. I work with men, but they're a small portion of the work that I do. But for women, because once again, I am a woman. And I know the messaging that's out there in reference to who we should be, how we should be, how we should behave. And if you don't act like the status quo or what they call the norm, then there's all these goofy things they want to say to you to diminish your self-worth and to diminish your value. It's not true. That only is, a, is acceptable and allowable if you allow it to be your truth. It doesn't have to be your truth. I'll say it again. 
He worked with a very set, a very distinct segment of men. And the men that he worked with were not every single man that walks this planet. But I will, I do agree with him on some of the things that he said, because once again, I spend time with affluent, rich, and wealthy men. And I've said this many, many times. They have different desires. They have different types of women they enjoy. This is a different cross, different cultures, different lifestyles, different segments, different ethnic groups. There's so many components and moving parts. But I will say this, they do have, especially when you get to the areas where the money is more um, abundant, shall we say? Yes, they have requirements. Yes, they have expectations. But once again, based upon the phase of their life, most of the men that Kevin was talking about were men that were looking to get married and have children. Okay? But you understand that there are affluent, rich, and wealthy men out there that are not able to have children. There are those who do not desire children. There are those who are divorced and already have children, not looking to have more children. There are those who are divorced, have children, and desire and have and want more children. I mean, ladies, I could go on. So that's what I'm saying when people are getting upset and, you know, all foaming at the mouth about this man. I'm like, take a deep breath. I'm not saying he's never said anything that wasn't just like, oh, Kevin. I can definitely say that. I've said it a couple times when listening to him going, really, Kevin? By the way, rest in peace, Kevin, or rest in power. So for the, once again, the individual that made the comment about, you know, her opinions of Kevin and made the statement that, you know, that me discussing him is not going to do anything for my platform. I have no need for Kevin Samuels or any other person to do anything for my platform. I have been here for a very long time. I've been on this platform. I've been on YouTube for years. I've been doing what I do for decades in reference to working with women. So I share the stuff I share because I have a desire to educate you and to get you guys out of your feelings so you can actually hear and pay attention to what is actual wisdom. Because what I have noticed with him is, yes, at times he can be very harsh with people, but that usually has come when someone really has, I'm not saying that, well, yeah, usually they do earn it. They usually do deserve it because he'll ask, he's very direct. He's a man. He speaks the way men speak. But I've watched this man be so gentle, so thoughtful, so caring with so many women. He's actually have actually come into his space to ask him questions. Because remember, when someone has, a woman has come into his space, they're there asking him for his advice. See, this is where folks get all messed up. You know, they're getting all mad and pissed off. And he's, but the person asked him what his opinion was. But I've watched him be very caring with some people. There was a video I was watching... Um, I think it was yesterday, and it was a young lady. She was in her 20s, and she was, you know, a, I despise the word plus size. I really, really do. But she was a plus size young lady. And she stood about five foot tall. She said, this is her discussing, a five foot tall, and she weighed well over 230. She was be be beautiful. That skin was flawless, beautiful young lady. But she had a desire. Once again, to date, once again, what they call these, you guys call these high value men. And he was very kind with her. He was very thoughtful with her. He was very gentle with her. Um, the questions that he asked, because he had a very set standard of questions he asked. You guys listen to videos, you hear the questions, they're pretty standard. But he didn't berate her. He didn't talk down to her. He made recommendations, recommendations and suggestions because. At 200 and some plus pounds at five foot, that's a lot of weight to carry. Ladies, I worked weight loss for 10 years. I can tell you about unhealthy weight, okay? I don't care what they're saying in reference to, you know, if you're healthy right now and you're still, you know, a, you know, a larger woman. You're healthy now, but the thing is this, as you get older, things are going to shift and change. I've watched it for 10 years, okay? Always take care of yourself. I'm not saying you need to be pencil thin, because not everyone needs to be a size four or six. Because some people have never been a size four or six. I have been, but that was many years ago. Many, many years ago. And I have zero desire to be that small again. But it's about knowing your body, how to care for yourself, making sure you are taking care of yourself. But anyway, I don't want to talk about him today. I'm not discussing him today. But I want to put that out there because, once again, I like the information because it's also helped me have a better understanding about what's going on out there. Because I kid you not, 
I'm not hearing those kind of conversations and oddities and stuff inside a wealthy wife because the goddaughters are just a different vibration. They're coming into wealthy wife once again to become their best version of themselves, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. And to decide if they are going to date affluent, rich, and wealthy men, and then to learn what that means and looks like for them based upon who they desire to date. You have to know, okay? You may not have the exact individual or people in mind, but you have to have a concept of the kind of men you're attracted to. And then when I'm listening to the women, because you guys are still trying to turn yourself inside out. Once again, this never is not saying any of you directly, but I'm listening to women attempting to turn themselves inside out to fit a stereotype. You want to know what excites affluent, rich, and wealthy men? Because Kevin even mentioned it. He said this for those that thought he didn't like us. He or he said has said on numerous videos that women are the prize. His, what did he call the FBI? I think it was a feminine beauty and inspiration. He said it's important that a woman be a man's inspiration because men need inspiration and we are their inspiration. He said men essentially, generally, basically civilized, civil, you know, basically civilized, you know, the world for us. And he also mentioned the importance of a muse in a man's life. He's not the only man who discusses that, ladies. And, you know, I had these conversations with you because I really have a desire for more of you to be able to understand that you have this greatness living inside of you, but you keep expecting other people to tell you what it is. It's not for them to tell you. It's for you to find out what that is. So this pair, the Paramore Bible, this, like I said, the next, uh, yeah, the next guide that's coming out, it literally goes over. Oh, my gosh, I don't have it here in front of me. Hang on one second. It is literally going over, learning how to be basically that it girl. And I use the term paramour because people spouse out when I use the word courtesan. But I'm going to say this again. It's not about you becoming a courtesan. Because that requires a whole level of thinking and processing and being and dedication to learning about men and life and so many different topics that I understand most women aren't going to do it. Most of you really do desire that high value man so that you don't have to work so hard or don't have to work at all. Now I'm going to be discussing that too because my other, the two part book series I mentioned, it discusses those things specifically. But I'll say it again. Even in that kind of lifestyle, you still have to work. There are expectations that come in that lifestyle. I don't know. I, I don't sometimes because I, I'll say once again. I'm telling say it again. Those conversations I listen to are valuable because women really have no clue. I'm like, oh, but I'm not surprised because once again, most people have never dated in the space of athletes, rich or wealthy. I get that. And when I first got into it, I would have been just as clueless. Well, maybe not as close on some things because I actually had friends that were rich and wealthy. Um, so I had some chance to see some interactions with, with their parents and how they live their lives. But I wasn't raised. I was raised middle class. And once again, no shade against my family. I appreciate my middle class upbringing. Um, you learn quite a bit about life and you also figure out whether you want to stay there or not. I don't want to be middle class. Okay. Only because... I'm just not good about just sticking. I mean, you know, I'm a middle child, trust me. And I'm, I'm every bit of middle child, trust me. Ooh, am I ever. I'm just, you know, I always like to be moving forward and upwards. You know, life is about evolving and elevating. So I may have started in the middle, so to speak. I'm not staying there. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, but I, I'm just thinking about these conversations that are going through my head that I've been listening to for like the past almost two weeks now. And... Some of it is sad. Some of it really is sad because these are women that honest and truly want more. But they're, some of them aren't willing to do the work to make it happen. Some of them have a desire to do the work, but it's only the basics, the bare bone minimum. Because I say it again, because some of you may have written, some of you listening to me may have, may have, have hit the jackpot and you're with what you guys call a high value man. And some of you may be dating rich men. Some of you may be married to them. But you hit a wall. Because now that you're there, now that you're on the other side and you see all of the moving parts and you weren't prepared for it. You weren't. 
You see the pretty pictures on social media and people assume that's all these women do all day. It's not what they do. They take pictures periodically to showcase their lifestyles and share with you guys the pretty pictures. But I'll use the example again of Jackie, or is it Jackie? Um, Ina, is that her name? Living lavishly, I think it is. She's on, I, I like Jackie. I really, really do. I, I just I, I like her. I, I like how she's just, she's herself. She's a perfect example of somebody who said, you know what? I'm living my best life. And she seems to be happily paired up. I'm assuming that's her husband. I don't know if they got married or not married. It doesn't really matter to me. They're together and seem happily so. I believe that's her husband. She's living a very lavish lifestyle that she earned. She has businesses. I learned about her through one of my sisters. I guess she came into the process first doing makeup. Once again, I'm kind of new to Jackie, so I don't know her, her, her whole story, origin story. But I know she has a, a candle line, fragrance and stuff like that. I know she loves fragrances. But anyway, and she shares with you guys her dates, you know, some of her day-to-day -day stuff. But you understand that I always laugh when she like does her morning stuff. Because I don't watch her every day. I just pick her up periodically and I run across to my feed and Instagram. But when she's ironing or steaming her sheets, I'm like, wow, that's intense. But that brings her joy. But I'm laughing because, you know, people are looking at go, oh my God, that's awesome and amazing. You understand that she has household staff too, right? You understand that she actually is running an empire, a whole empire. You know, you see her going to fashion week. That didn't happen overnight. When you see her being featured in different things, that didn't happen overnight. She has been putting in the work. And it's very beneficial because I don't know anything about her husband. I have no idea who he is, but I'm assuming he must be somebody who's either building an empire with her or he may have his own thing going on. But we're talking about the network that they have. Because for her to have, what is it, the um, the sponsorship she runs into, for her to once again be able to get into Fashion Week, and I don't know where she sits. I wouldn't be the I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if she's not sitting front row. If not front row, she's awfully close to front row. Once again, I've never seen her at a fashion show, but I know she goes to Fashion Week. Uh, the different things she's featured in. That's part of a Rolodex that she has been building over the course of years, and that requires great communication skills. That requires the ability to actually cooperate and collaborate with people that requires you having a very strong sense of self. This is why when people come to her and have those off the mark and off the colored comments that, you know, she will address periodically, which always, oh my gosh, she's awesome. Because she just basically tells people, stay in your own lane. Don't worry about me. You like me great, you don't, okay. She's living her best life. And I would love more of you to be able to live your best life. But you have to, once again, know who you are. And then understand how to build out those characters and qualities of you so that you can determine what direction you're going in. In the Paramour Bible, is I, I love this. I really do. This is kind of like wealthy wife, you know, meeting, dating, marrying a rich man. Point two point oh on steroids. Because in this one, I'm able to build out and expand upon information that I shared with you in the first book, but this one is even more because it's going to, you know, include things in reference to what is that elite paramour? Who is she? I give you guys a little bit of historic history in reference to the courtesans. Remember, courtesans were independent women. The reason why I discuss them so often is because these were women that decided like I said, not all of them came, you know, out of great backgrounds. Some of them literally came off the streets for sure. But they had the wherewithal, they had the determination, and they had the discipline to parlay their lives into something great. I'll say this once again. When I discuss them, I'm talking about the best of the best. Because once again, not all of them did well. Some of them crashed and burnt because once again, we're talking about human nature. But for the ones that did very, very well, they did really well. OK, and that's because they were a devotee of self and their profession, because courtesan was a profession. And I'll say it again, hasn't gone anywhere. And courtesan, I'll say this once more, has, has nothing to do with just sex. Because how much those women brought in monetarily, what those men had to offer these women and give these women and do for these women at that tip top of that pyramid, so to speak. Honey, if it was just sex, he could have got it far, far cheaper off a street corner someplace, okay? And in our modern world, they don't have to pay anything because there are so many women chasing after these men. 
so many tons chasing after them and they know it. So if you've got somebody there that just wants to play with somebody, they've got plenty of playmates they can spend far less money on. So to be that elite, and I'm using the word paramour, to be that elite paramour, it means you have a very strong sense of self. You have great communication skills. So I give you some historical background so you understand that these women, they weren't just, they were so much more. They had professions. Some of them were artists, writers, dancers, actresses, intellectuals. Some of them were scientists. Some of them were wealthy. I've said before, some of those courtesans that I've discussed came out of wealthy families. So they, and, and, and for those that didn't, they eventually learned the protocols and the ways of the wealthy because of the men that they were spending time with. So it wound up being a very win-win situation for both because the men had quite, they gained quite a bit from those interactions because these women were well-connected. And this is something we discuss in this book as well because I really desire for you guys to start thinking like this, that this level of woman empowerment. Feminine, imp feminine, I can't even say the word today. Feminine empowerment. The elite courtesans, the elite paramours, they were pursued. Remember I mentioned the word, the fact that you had the court, the courtesan? These women were courted when they came from the high level because they were very intelligent. Once again, they were very well connected. They knew quite a bit about many different things. They were great listeners. They understood how to collaborate and co-create with men. They knew men. They weren't afraid of men. Like I said, the ones that made it to the very top. Because they had to get through, they, some of them had to go through some stuff to get to that very top. And when they got there, if they were wise, they walked away as wealthy women. And we're still discussing many of them today. That tells you just how dynamic they were. Now, you may not want to become iconic and be, you know, infamous, but it doesn't matter. You still should be, have a desire to learn skill sets that make you whatever it is you desire to be in the world that you are creating. So we talk about it, you know, the mindset of a paramour. We've got the art of seduction because once again, this is about communication skills. I'll say it again. Seduction is an art aspect of artistic aspect, so to speak, of communication. It's wonderful. It's such a wonderful way to build energy, to build um, enjoyment, to build wisdom between you and someone when you understand how to do it properly. And talk about in this book is going to be creating your iconic personal brand. Because once again, you need to have a signature look, a signature style. If you ladies understood how much these men could really care less about all of you looking exactly alike. I'm just telling you what I hear. Because remember, I talk to them. I have discussions with them too. And they're usually asking me, why does everybody look alike? I go, because they keep following the lead of women. Of telling them that's what you guys want. They're like, really? I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't know that that women are telling other women that they need to look just like that to actually attract you? They're like, oh, <laughs> that's interesting. For the short term and for the play play, it might work. But for long term and the wife and any other long term relationship with them, not so much. You really do want to develop your own unique style. He has a desire to be able to go places with you and just you being stunning, stunningly you. The one thing they love to do, and I have enjoyed this, like I said, in my relationships, is they love when their friends are just wowed by you. Just like, whoa, man, where'd you meet her? Wow. <laughs> really? It's like, they're like, and he's like, yeah. They, and then, and then even better, not only is the woman, woman on their armor by their side beautiful, and I'm saying beauty is not what women call beautiful. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. These men have their own standard and ideal of beauty. It is not a one-size-fits-all. There may be some commonalities, but it is not a one-size-fits-all. So not only is the woman next to them beautiful based upon what they feel is beautiful, but when she opens her mouth and speaks, oh my gosh, the conversation, the wisdom, the art of communication, the way she has the ability to put people at ease, the way people are intrigued by who she is in her own right, not just because she's with him. 
I'll say it again. Some of you probably have these men and you're kind of standing around like, I don't know what to do now. Because you may be sitting in the background somewhere. And I'll tell you right now, that's the last thing you want with these men. Not that you got to be standing out, you know, that you always have to be front and center. By it, and that's no, I'm not saying that. But you want to make sure that when people ask him about you, they're asking about you. Not just, hey, hey, Joe, where's your wife? How's your wife doing? They're literally going to be able to, to say your name. And they're going to be able to say, oh, and how's she doing with ABC? Or, oh my gosh, you know, she did, a, you know, DEF. And that was like really amazing. Because the people in your community are going to know who you are. And once again, it need not be something big and grand all the time, but they're going to know who you are because as you lay that foundation, you're going to build up and build it out based upon what the goals are that you and your person have decided are your family's goals. And if you are a single woman who's going to stay the paramour, because the paramour, I said before, that is something that you should learn how to, you should learn her, these aspects, whether you desire to remain single or if you desire to get married. And even if you're already married, these are concepts and components that you should know. That's how important they are because they're going to give you basically a blueprint to start building out, asking more questions and giving you some guidance as to what to look into. Because sometimes you guys don't know what to look into. You don't. I'm going to say this, listening to these conversations I've been listening to with Kevin, I kid you not, I'm stunned and not in a good way. But then I guess I keep reminding myself, a lot of women just don't know who these men are or what these lifestyles are because they've never seen it. And I'll say it again, no shape being thrown. I had no clue either when I began. Not to the extent that I know now, obviously, because I've been at this for a minute for decades or crying out loud. But I just have such a, such a great desire to share with those who are ready to take it really, not, not just to the next level, but to the next stratosphere and to do it well. Because the other set of books I have, the, the part two, the, uh, the two part series, it's going to discuss the topic of the gold digger. It's not in this book because I, I, I need to also, because that's another thing I just had to put out there. Because sometimes when women are pursuing these men, I can see why that term gold digger comes up. Because some of them are coming into it with no finesse. I mean, literally with, with zero, z zero finesse. And even if your goal is that you desire to be with them, and it literally is, because all of it is a business transaction, whether you're married, single, whatever you're doing, life is a business transaction, just so you know. But even if your goal is to just, once again, you're, you're looking for benefactors or patrons, you're not looking for the husband per se, there still is a level of finesse that you need to have. And this Paramore Bible is going to assist you because it's going to give you things to look into and things to think about that I know for a fact aren't out there. Not in the way that I can present them to you because I'm inside this world. I'm not on the outside looking in. I'm inside of it looking out to share. And especially if you want to go bigger and more. Because in this book, we even talk about creating a, leg a lasting legacy. In this book, you're going to talk about, you know, once again, self-care, well-being. We're going to be discussing, you know, of course, living that lavish and opulent lifestyle, what that entails. And it goes into different things like, you know, traveling, food, dining. It's just, I mean, the hosting, ton of things there. Financial empowerment and independence. Because once again, if you're doing this lifestyle, rather it is through the space of a single woman or a married one, you need to understand the financial side. I understand this firsthand because I did not understand these things myself in the beginning. And there's still things I'm learning as we speak. Because what is the point of obtaining this money and these resources? And all you're going to do is blow it. I have run across too many women that have lost everything. And I'm not saying I haven't done it before. I have. I've definitely done it. I've definitely done it. My earlier years? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Did not understand. Did not understand it. But man, does the wisdom happen when you get older. Because you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to keep doing this. But I've seen women that they're, they're, they're talking like, well, at least I have enough money. I go, but what do you have to show for it? What will you have to show for it when that relationship ends? What do you have to show for it? Outside of a bunch of handbags, shoes, and God knows whatever else you collected along the way. What do you have? Do you have investments? Do you have property? Um, have you started a business? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. What are you doing? 
So that's part of this book too, once again, to start planting those seeds and making you guys look beyond just what you see in the pretty pictures on social media. And so that these conversations, literally they're hearing with Kevin and these lovely ladies, for the most part, some of them are trash. I'm not going to lie. Some of them were, and, and, they, and they knew it. That was the part that got me. They knew it because they weren't there for real, for real information. They literally were there to troll, which is kind of sad. It really is sad because I'm thinking, you know what? Here was a chance. Matter of fact, don't even go on. Just sit back and take notes. Or better yet, if, he, if you don't like what he's saying, don't listen to him. It's just such a simple thing. People amaze me. They get all in a frenzy about stuff. But if the information makes you unhappy or bothers you, just don't listen to it. If it's not pertaining to you, is that something that's harmful? Just go the other way. It's so easy. So, so people aggravate themselves. I'm like, but all you have to do is just not listen. There's so many things to watch on YouTube. Trust me, I know. I've got many things I do watch on YouTube when I take a break from what I'm doing. But anyway, so yeah, so this 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 is really, this is intense. It talks about how to navigate elite social circles. For example, uh, understanding the social dynamics of affluent communities, building and maintaining valuable connections, how to be the ultimate socialite. Talked a little bit about etiquette and manners. Uh, in reference to harmonious relationship with affluent men, understanding the needs and desires of affluent rich and wealthy men, how to become his muse, inspire and uplifting your partner, dealing with the challenges and the conflicts with grace, because you're going to have challenges, you're going to have difficulties in relationships, because you've got two people coming into it from two different backgrounds, two different lifestyles, two different life experiences. So, and those challenges, so to speak, and conflicts need not be something wild and crazy when you keep the line of communication open and when you understand how to speak to each other. I teach the art of communication. The goddaughters know this. We have this discussion often. How to communicate and how to communicate with men. Our last call that we just did, we did a Wednesday call, the last one for the month, and we had that discussion on how to speak to men. And information, I shared information and I had a couple goddaughters that shared information that was really, really great information on how to speak to men because men do not respond, speak, or process information the same way we do. So when something comes up that is a conflict, so for example, you have to understand, one, don't get all emotional. Literally take a deep breath so you can so you can actually hear what's being said and make sure that what you heard is correct because you got to paraphrase it back to that person. Okay. Oh my God, I'm screaming at you right now. But you know what? We're gonna have this conversation and we're we're gonna come to resolution. Okay. What I what I heard what I heard you say was A B C, and he will say yes. I said A B C, or he may say no. Actually, I said H I J, and you're like. Oh, okay. Would you please repeat that? Because what will happen is when you take that deep breath and when you give yourself more to collect your thoughts and silence is okay, just so you know. Not that angry, passive, aggressive silence. But that silence is kind of says, you know what, I just need a moment because I, I'm processing what you just said and I just, give me a minute. The conflicts need not be wild and crazy. And you will learn your person. You know, I mentioned that, and I've discussed my tenure relationship on here, on different audios here on YouTube, videos on YouTube. You know, we had, like I said, we had a 29 years age, we had a 29 year age difference. His children were older than me, okay? And he didn't have the best opinion of women because most of the women around him were airheads. I knew them, I met them. They were, I'm like, wow. So there were times in the beginning of a relationship that I said before, he would speak to me like I was a flipping six year old. I was like, what? Because, you know, here's this older gentleman, you know, this 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 well-to-do gentleman, and, you know, he's got all this life experience under his belt, and he's got all these things going on, and blah, blah, blah. And he would sometimes he would just say things to me. I'm going, and it didn't, sometimes it wouldn't register because I would just ignore it. Because I'd, I'd be on to something else when I think about it. But one time it hit my brain. I'm like, whoa, Nelly. I was like, wait, what did you just say to me? And he repeated himself. I go, you understand I'm a full-grown woman, right? Well, you understand that I'm a full-fledged adult over here. And I just dawned on me that there are times you speak to me like I'm a child. And we're, not going, we're, we're no longer doing this, okay? No, we're not doing this. And he didn't realize he was even doing it. 
because once again, this was just his way he spoke to women for the most part, because the women around him, I had met them with the exception of one, the exception of one. She was very, very intelligent. She was very, very, she was, oh, I, I really liked her. She was awesome. But the rest of them, and I know sometimes they just did it. Some, some of them did it just to irk him. They did. They were passive, their way of being passive aggressive, but whatever. So we resolved it. And we had, other, we had other issues because we were there together for 10 years. Long-term relationships, ladies, are up and down, in and out. Beautiful experiences. I, I, I love long-term relationships. I, I advocate for them. I think they're amazing to be in. But you really have to be built a certain way because you have to learn how to not take things personal. You have to learn how to listen. You have to mean really listen. Because once again, we're talking about two different genders in our case, almost three different generations between us, okay? 30 years, every 10 years is basically a new generation. So there are almost three different generations of concepts and lifestyles and life experiences between us. He had 29. This man was a full-grown person when I was born. So he had seen things in life that I didn't even have. I had read about in a history book, okay? I'm just sharing it with you. And then he was a man. And I only date men who are truly men. I date very masculine men. I'm a very feminine woman. So I attract that. That They are my polar opposites. But we blend very beautifully. So with that very protective nature. Because he was incredibly protective of me. Which was lovely. Intense at times. But it was lovely. But also, like I said, my, and, 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 and the provider side of it. He, he loved to do things for me. Just, it, was, it was a great relationship. Like I said, it, it had to end. With the reason that it ended, which I would never just put out in public because it's no one's business. Um, but it ended for very, very valid reasons. And it was unfortunate because this was somebody that I would have spent the rest of my life, rest of his life with because he would have, I'm definitely going to outlive him. Um... But I would have spent the rest of his life with him. Absolutely. I was looking at this man. This was my person that I would have spent literally 20, 30 years with. 30, actually 30, 40 years. Probably maxed out at... We could have did 30, 40 years together. Possibly. If he lived to be a really old man. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. This was somebody that, yes. I was in that space of wife with him. And I enjoyed it immensely. Like I said, until it had to end. But I'm thankful for the relationship. And I share this with you guys because I learned so much with him. I learned so much, once again, about the power of networking, about the power of really knowing what you desire. Knowing how to have a conversation. Knowing how to be part of his world. Because I'm going to probably do, like I said, a deeper um, video, audio on this topic. But be invited into his world. Because with him, we would go to functions. We would do things together. And I had to meet his core friends. I had to meet his friends. And he had very powerful friends. And I remember when I met one of them um, who was just unreal in reference to the level of uh, influence and power this gentleman had. And I remember he was nervous. He, he, was, he was nervous He's like, I know you're going to be fine. He goes, I know he's going to love you. He goes, I'm just nervous. I'm like, it's okay. Because he just had such respect for this gentleman. And it was an older, a gentleman older than him. And I was going to be meeting that gentleman along with this gentleman's mistress. Just so you know the gentleman. I said before, they have different lifestyles. They have different components of relationships. When you get into the space, of, it happens in lower incomes as well, but it's more organized, usually for the most part, when you get into the space of rich and wealthy. So I was going to meet this man, man's, his friend, this gentleman, his basic his mentor, and then this mentor's mistress. I, so I'll say it again. I have been so well versed and educated in this lifestyle. It even makes me laugh out loud sometimes when I speak out loud about the experiences I have and that I have to share and the reasons why I speak the way I speak. But I remember when I met this gentleman, very distinguished older gentleman, very distinguished. Oh, my God. Just handsome, very distinguished, very well-spoken, uh, very, very powerful. I mean, people were just, 
we went to this restaurant that you know this particular restaurant and i love watching people cater to people that they hold under such high honor and by the way i passed with flying colors just so you know I had a great time we had a great conversation you know gentleman have a conversation with him and then after i had a chance to meet with him you know he got a chance to understand me and my personality i guess you know i i i passed whatever whatever was going on between the two of them in reference to me i passed with flying colors those two talk were talking business i was talking to this gentleman's mistress lovely lady she'd known the man for like she had basically came into his life when she was young because she was older than me and you know she'd been with this gentleman for like 20 years by the time i'd met her because she was older than me as well um and i'm sharing this for a reason these are the moving parts that you can run into in this lifestyle. That's why I say again, you need to understand what you desire. That's why I put together the Paramore Bible because it's going to give you guys some insight into reference to. So I'm at the end of this. I got a phone call coming in. But anyway, I sh once again, I share these things with you guys because I want you to understand that there are many, many layers to this lifestyle. So when you say you desire a high value man, so you say you desire these different experiences, I want to make sure you're selecting properly for yourself and that you're doing it from a space of wisdom and having been cultivated, educated properly. Not just hope and wishes, not just theories, and not just based upon someone's narrow lifestyle, based upon just their personal experience. I have a wide range of experiences, personal as well as others. And I would love to help you guys figure out what you desire. So anyway, the Paramore Bible, you can go to, click the link below and get your copy. There will be an audio version of it coming. I'm working on editing it. I'm working on um, editing out the background noise as we speak. So there will be an audio version of, as well. Um, when you and there will be three different ways, three I think three different ways to purchase it. But right now you have access to the PDF. So anyway, have an awesome day. We'll talk soon. Bye bye.